Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we are looking at the digestive system. The digestive system starts from the mouth and finishes at the anus. The point from the mouth to the anus is called the alimentary canal or the digestive tract. So food will leave from the mouth, go through the tract and ends at the anus. And so we're going to look at what is happening at each part. But before we go to that, we'll look at the structures that, in, that are involved in the alimentary canal. So we have the oral or buccal cavity. That is the inside of the mouth. We have the esophagus. We have the stomach. The small intestine. The large intestine. And we also have the appendix. We have the rectum and the anus but there are also some very important parts and those will include the pancreas the liver the gallbladder and also the bile duct and you're going to see the importance of these when i go through each part but let's start with the mouth so in the mouth it is very important to note that that's the point where digestion begins in fact, you have physical or mechanical digestion taking place and also chemical digestion. So the food is being chewed, which is the physical digestion. And so as food is being chewed, saliva mixes with food. The tongue is also important in mixing the food. The tongue is also important in forming a bolus, which is a ball of food. The tongue will also be important in help pushing the bolus back into the throat that will eventually lead into the esophagus. Starch is turned into maltose. And so in saliva, you will have salivary amylase that will turn starch into maltose. Now let's cut the esophagus. The esophagus is a very unique structure. Very important to note that there is no digestion taking place in the esophagus. So what is happening in, in the esophagus is that food is being transported to the stomach. And it does this in a very unique way. Because the muscles in the esophagus will contract and relax causing a wave-like motion. This wave-like motion will push food down towards the stomach. And this wave-like mo mo motion or movement is called peristalsis. Now, when in the stomach. Now, the stomach is a very unique structure. And as you notice, there are two sets of muscles on the stomach. The uppermost part, you have the lower esophageal pincer muscles. And these muscles will be important in releasing substances or the bolus from the esophagus into the stomach. At the lower end of the stomach, you have the pyloric spincer muscles. And the pyloric spincer muscles, they are important in releasing the food or the chyme from the stomach into the small intestine. The stomach, you have food is being churned. So there's a physical digestion taking place when food is being churned. Also, pepsin and hydrochloric acid are being secreted. Pepsin is an enzyme responsible to break down protein. So, therefore, there is also a chemical digestion taking place. Hydrochloric acid creates the optimal condition for pepsin to work. Hydrochloric acid also helps to start break down the food particles. Now, protein will turn into... Proteins will turn into polypeptides. And very important to note, because of the presence of hydrochloric acid, this, the, the content of the stomach is acidic. And so the mixture of gastric juice, which is the pepsin hydrochloric acid, and mucus and other substances such as water will give you the gastric juice. When gastric juice mixes with the food, it forms chyme, and chyme will be released into the small intestine by the pyloric spincer muscles. Food will leave from the stomach into the small intestine, and so the small intestine, which is very important, in fact, there are three different sections of the small intestine. 
the uppermost part is called the duodenum. The middle portion is called the jejunum. And the last part is called the ileum. In the small intestine, it's very important to note that is where digestion is completed. So this is where digestion ends. All digestion ends in the small intestine. In fact, only chemical digestion is being taking place in the small intestine. So nutrients is also being absorbed in the small intestine. And nutrients are absorbed by some finger-like structures known as villi. Now, since digestion ends in the small intestine, it's very important to point out the end products of the digestion of nutrients. And so, fats will turn into fatty acid and glycerol. So, the end products of the digestion of fats or the broken down of fats is fatty acids and glycerol. For carbohydrates, the end product of digestion of carbohydrates is glucose, which is a simple sugar. The end product of polypeptides or protein is amino acids. Now, very important to note that these substances, when they are formed, they will be sent to the liver and other parts of the body for usage or storage. Now, the villus, as mentioned, is a singular form, only one of the finger-like projections that I mentioned, which are called villi. So the structure of the villus, you have an outermost layer, which is called the epithelium. And on the epithelium, or within the epithelium, you'll find the epithelial cells. So these cells, they are known as epithelial cells. And they are very thin, so substances could easily diffuse through the walls of the epithelium. And important to note, that the villi, they are responsible to increase the surface area of the small intestine for effective absorption of digested nutrients. Within the villus, you will have a network of capillaries. At one end of the capillary, you have the venule, and the venule will be connected to a vein, which is the hepatic portal vein, and that vein is going to be very important. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a very short while. The other end of the capillary will be the arteriole, and this will come from an artery or connect to an artery. In the innermost part of the villus, you have the lacteal, and the lacteal will be very important in absorbing fatty acids. The capillaries will be very important in absorbing amino acids and glucose. The lacteal is connected to the lymphatic vessel, which connects to the lymphatic system. As mentioned, that the villus is very important in absorbing digested, digested nutrients that you get from food. And again, the end of the venule will be connected to the hepatic portal vein, which will take food substances to the liver and the substances that will go to the liver coming from the capillaries will be the amino acids and the glucose. So now let's look at the liver. The liver is very is a very important structure. In fact, it has many, many functions in the body, and hence it's also the largest organ, internal organ of the body. And so let's look at the structures um, connected to or be close to the liver. You'll have the gallbladder. You attached to the gallbladder, you have a bile duct. And in the gallbladder is where bile is being stored. And the bile duct will transport the bile from the gallbladder into the small intestine. So as mentioned in the villus is that the liver is connected to the small intestine by the hepatic portal vein. The liver receives absorbed nutrients from the small intestine. The liver will also process the nutrients it receives from the small intestine. And those nutrients, as a means of reminder, will be glucose and amino acids. As mentioned, the liver has many, many functions, but I'm only highlighting the functions that are associated with the digestive system. The liver also produces bile, and the bile is needed to emulsify fats. So bile is produced by the liver, but is stored in the gallbladder, and then released into the small intestine by the bile duct. 
The pancreas is also important and is also another accessory gland to the digestive system. The pancreas has two main functions in the body. It serves as an endocrine organ and also an accessory to the digestive system. So just to point out a few structures here, we have the pancreatic duct that will release substance into the small intestine. And we have the islets of Langerhans. The islets of Langerhans, they do not serve any function in the digestive system, but they are part of the endocrine system because they produce hormones. And the hormones they produce will be insulin and glucagon. And they are important in controlling the amount of sugar in the blood. Now we have the Achenar cells. And the Achenar cells, they are very important in assisting in the digestion process in fact the digestion of fats and so the Achenar cells will produce sodium iodine carbonate and sodium iodine carbonate is important to neutralize the acidic content coming from the stomach because you remember the substance from the stomach it is acidic chime is acidic so sodium iodine carbonate is a base and base will neutralize acid Otherwise, if the acid is not neutralized, the enzyme produced by the pancreas, they will not be able to function. And so the pancreas produces specific digestive enzymes such as trypsin, amylase, and lipase. And these enzymes will need a basic or alkalinic condition to work effectively. Now the large intestine, and this is the last part of the digestive tract or the alimentary canal. And so the large intestine is also called the colon. And the colon attaches to the small intestine. So food will enter from this section right here. I'm going to give you the name of that in a few seconds. But I want to outline that food will go up first. So you have ascending colon. Then it will go crossway or horizontal and that is called a transverse colon and then food will go down and that is called a descending colon but the other important parts that are connected to the large intestine will be the cecum and this is a region where the small intestine will be connected to and you also have the appendix and the appendix um, they say it does not have much functions or known functions but it do serve function because an assumption is that it may contain useful bacteria. You have the sigmoid colon and this is where the rectum will be connected to. It is kind of an S shape. And so you have the rectum and the rectum will be important in storing um, the feces. And you have the anus and the anus will be very important in releasing the feces from the body. Or the undigested food. So this is where egestion will take place. So in the large intestine or the colon is where you have the reabsorption of water and electrolytes in the form of salts and also free radicals. The large intestine produces and absorbs vitamins. This is where Feces is being formed and also ingested, which means pass out of the body. And now we are at the end of the lesson, and I am looking forward to see you in the, in the other lesson. In fact, the next lesson will be on the digestion of certain nutrients. So I'm looking forward to see you then. Take care and be safe.